Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be using the Vertica database to create multiple tables and join these tables using a foreign key. So the first thing we need to start off with is to have our Vertica database. So there's another video on how to set that up using Docker and then you also need a DB visualizer or some sort of tool that will allow you to make statements such as creating tables, creating schemas, selecting from a database and all that. So if you don't have one I would suggest to use DB Visualizer. So let's just jump into it. So the first thing is to create a schema. So we can call our schema whatever we want but the idea for this project is we're going to have a shop and that shop is going to have a couple of different tables. So one of the tables is going to be a customer table and the second table is going to be an item table. And a customer can order an item and then that item would have an ID and then that customer's order would be stored within the customer using a foreign key. So if that is a little bit confusing or doesn't make perfect sense don't worry about it we're going to jump into it right now so to create a schema we just say create schema and then the name of our schema so as I said we're going to call our schema shop so if we go and run this and you can see within here at the minute we have public but we don't have any other type of schemas so if I just do a refresh on this, you can see we now see shop. But if we look in the shop schema tables, we don't see anything. So the next thing we need to do is to create those tables. So I'm just going to grab a snippet of code that I have over here. And this is going to allow us to create our table. So I'm going to just copy this and paste it in here. So we're just going to create table and then shop.item uh, and actually we can we can create the item first, it doesn't matter um, we're going to have an ID and we're going to have a name and we're going to use our primary key as our ID or our ID as our primary key and the reason why I just didn't call it let's say name like this is because name is a keyword so it would cause problems. So I just put an I in front of it for item and this allows us to identify exactly what it is. So if we just go and run this you can see that it has created the table successfully for us. Now the next thing we want to go is to create our other table and our other table will be called customer. So just below that we can put in customer and this will have a primary key which is uh, called C underscore ID. It'll also have a name which is called C underscore name and then it has this other thing which is kind of funny and that's what we're going to talk about at the minute. So we've got this thing that has III underscore ID. So this is going to be the name that we're going to use as our foreign key. And this ID here, that's III underscore ID, will actually be this um, I underscore ID within the items table. So you could call this something better than this here. So let's go and do that. I just wanted you to know that you could call it whatever you want. So a better name might be fk for foreign key and then let's say i underscore id. So that's a little bit better. Uh, that's going to be an int because this is an int here. Um, and then we're going to have a constraint and then we need to reference it. So the reference is shop.item. So that's it there. That's our table, our schema, and then our table. And then our primary key, which is the item underscore ID or the I underscore ID and then this thing here can be whatever you want for 
for the purposes um, of this, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you could have this as a description, calling it, you know, uh, foreign key underscore i id or something like that, or you could call it just i underscore id. You could put it in there, but for this, we're just going to put something random because it really doesn't matter. I just want you to know it can be anything. So you can see this here makes absolutely no sense, but I'm just going to go and run this and you'll see that it works. So if we, well, it should work. Why does that not work? Oh, I don't have uh, all of the statements selected. Okay, I was wondering why that didn't work. Okay, so now it's successful. I was starting to second guess myself there with my previous statement. So the next thing we want to do is to try and get some data uh, inserted into these tables. If we try and select some data from the tables currently, so if we say select from shop.customer, which would be this table, if we try and run this, we won't get any data. It'll say it's successful, but it has returned zero because there's no data in either the customer nor the items. So let's just go and put some data in there. So let's put some data in the items first. So I'm going to just paste this in, insert into shop.items values 2 and iPhone 13, and then a value of 4 and iPhone 12. So this number here, this first one, uh, just corresponds to the first column that we've mentioned here. So this is going to be the item underscore ID and then this iPhone 13 is going to be the item name and then for the second one 4 is going to be the ID and the name is going to be iPhone 12 so if we just select that and hit enter we can see that two rows have been successfully inserted so what we want to do next is we want to go and make some customers so let's just make up some customers. So again, we're doing something pretty similar, inserting into shop.customer and then the values uh, 21 Ryan and 2 for the first one, 26 Amy and 4 for the second one and so on. And the 21 will correspond to the ID, the customer ID. Then Ryan will be the customer name and 2 will be this foreign key and you'll see the way that this 2 here will correspond to this item here because Ryan has purchased an item that has an ID of 2 so the item that has an ID of 2 is the iPhone 13 and Amy has purchased an item with the ID of 4 which will be the iPhone 12 and then Kelly has also purchased an item with the ID of 2 which again will be the iPhone 13 as well. So if we just select this and as you can see uh, the three rows have been successfully inserted. Now the next thing we want to do is we just want to just check to make sure that these tables have been created and that we can select some data from these tables. So if we just go up to our tables and hit refresh you can see we have a customer table and we have an items table and if we look at the columns you can see it has a, an ID and name and this one has an ID and name and a foreign key so that looks fine now let's just go and try and select some data from this as well so at the minute if we try and select the data we can see our data that we've inserted and if we do the same for our items, so just copy that, paste it down here, take out customer and just put item and select this and we can see we have our two different types of items. So this shop only has two items um, at the moment. It's not a it's not a great shop but for this example it's perfect. It's, uh, it's nice and short. So the next statement that we need to look at will be to select from both of these tables at the same time and that's the reason why we join them using a foreign key in the first place so that will look something like this so select we're going to select everything from the customer and we're going to join 
that customer on the item and we're going to join that on this here so this is not called uh, triple i underscore id anymore we've renamed it to something a little bit better so we'll have to change that to this so once we have that changed and we run this we should see all five columns of all the data so if we run this so we can see one two three four five so this is all our data that we have and we can visualize this by using the join statement but this is selecting all the data now you might not necessarily want all the data because when we've looked at this before when we looked at the customer we could see that we have the customer ID, the name, then the foreign key, and we looked at the items, we could see the item ID and we could see the name. But maybe we want to have a couple of items or maybe we want to have an item from each table and not the rest of the information. So what would that look like? Well, it would look something very similar to selecting all the information, but rather than having this star or asterisk, we would just say what we want. So, for example, let's say we wanted the customer name and we wanted the item that, that customer had purchased. And we couldn't get this before just from using both tables. We'd have to do it. Uh, we'd have to do a select from each table individually. Um, but if we use a join, we can just put in C underscore name, then a comma, and then put in I underscore name. And if we run this, we should get our customer's name, which are these, Ryan, Kelly, and Amy, and then what that customer purchased, which was uh, two iPhone 13s and one iPhone 12. So I hope you gained something from this video. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.